The author of the passage discusses receptor fatigue, line 24, primarily in order to do what? So we go back to line 24, and this is a tricky question. The key here is why are they mentioning receptor fatigue? What, fat what function does this play? Well, he's discussing it why. Well, we go back here, it says, for example, and I'm reading from line 21, just read a little bit before it, get some context. Studies show that even brief periods of odorant stimulation produce transient re reductions in receptors in the olfactory epithelium, a process termed receptor fatigue. Now, I've read this, and I don't think I can really answer the question because it, it says, for example. I don't know what this example is, but it's clearly going to help me answer the question because it's asking the question is asking why are we discussing receptor fatigue? So I, after reading from line 21, I realized, hey, I got to read back an entire few lines here all the way to line 17. So I'm at line 17. It says, however, exposures to odors in natural environments often occur over far longer periods. And the resulting adaptations may differ qualitatively from short-term olfactory adaptation. So you have this idea of long-term adaptation and short-term. And then we are able to make sense of this. For example, they show that receptor fatigue is something you get even in brief periods. And then we want to read on after receptor fatigue. Again, what's going on here? What's the overall picture? It says prolonged odor stimulation, however, could produce more long-lasting reductions in response. Okay, and at that point we say, aha, the reason why he's mentioned this is there's a discussion here about short-term versus long-term, and that is, that gets us at the answer. So let's look here at answer choice A. Explain the physiological process through which long-lasting reductions in response are thought to be produced. Now, you may say, well, it mentions physiological processes and long-lasting reduction over time, and it talks about these higher structures or structures higher in the central nervous system. But does that, is that the answer to the question, why does the passage discuss receptor fatigue? And it's not. It's just putting in words that are around the area of line 24, but it doesn't answer the question, so we get rid of A. B, provide an example of a process that subjects would probably not experience during a prolonged period of odor and stimulation. A very tempting answer because, well, short-term exposure, you can experience receptor fatigue, but it says even in short-term. So this is here, for example, studies show that even brief periods, this is again as line 21, lead to receptor fatigue. So it's not only brief periods, it's, it's stressing that even in brief periods, meaning, well, long periods, you clearly get receptor fatigue, so you can get rid of answer choice B. C, help illustrate how the information gathered from most olfactory research may not be sufficient to describe the effects of extended exposure to odors. Now, this answer may not really gel with everything we've said, but remember, you want to have a sense of the general outline of the paragraph and of the passage. And here, the second understanding of the second paragraph is really going to help because that's what we're discussing here, this idea of what has most research been focused on, and it's short-term exposure because it's sufficient. It says these durations are sufficient for investigating most of the olfactory phenomena. However, we want something, you know, we're mentioning receptor fatigue because this is part of a discussion on how, well, long-term is different from short-term. And we know long-term isn't something that's studied by most researchers or most olfactory research. And so we look again at C, help illustrate how the information gathered from most olfactory research may not be sufficient. Because again, most olfactory research is on short-term and this discussion here where receptor fatigue is mentioned is talking about how long-term is qualitatively different, and therefore C is the best answer.